Hello there, it's Katie Miller here from All Kids Can Swim. Welcome to our video on behaviour management for Learn to Swim teachers. Alright, so we want to be able to manage the behaviours of the children in our class. Why? Because if they're not paying attention, they simply aren't learning. Alright, so for lessons to be effective, we have to have the attention of the children. And not at all times, but at the most important times. So I just wanted to say a quick hello so you know who I am and right now we'll flip over to my screen and we'll go through the key techniques that you need to be able to manage and control your lessons to ensure effective learning. Okay, so here we are over at my screen and we're going to learn all about how to effectively manage behaviour in the Learn to Swim lesson. Alright, so let's just bring this slideshow up. Alright, so what we want to look for in behaviour management and what we're, what we're aiming to do is to have engaging and effective learn to swim lessons. Alright, so it's not just enough that the lessons are engaging, they have to be effective. You should see progress through the skills of the learn to swim lessons. Alright, so before we get really into it, I want to just start with a, a quick little, it's okay. <laughs> Alright, it's okay to be yourself. You don't have to be a clown jumping around showing that you are the most entertaining person for the full 30 minutes and completely tire yourself out. If that's not you, you don't have to be that person. All right? You can be yourself during the lesson. And it's okay to become frustrated sometimes. I've put a little picture here of poor little Connor struggling to get himself out of the pool. You know, it's, it's okay to get frustrated and you will become frustrated at some times throughout the lessons. All right, so long as you go, okay, that's fine, it happens, you learn from that, you move on to the next lesson, and we try again. All right, so I just wanted to put that out there first. It's okay, breathe, we'll get there. All right, so what we want to look at today, we want to look at a couple of things. Firstly, we want to know how to assess ourselves. Where am I on my behavior management scale? Okay, am I behaving, managing behavior really well? Do I need to really improve? Am I somewhere in the middle? Then we're going to look at how you can actually create an engaging environment, an engaging lesson. So that means that there should be no reason that the children are misbehaving because they're bored or it's overstimulating and they don't understand the activities. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we're going to go into positive reinforcement. And this one's always fun for us learn to swim teachers. You know, it's about praise. And this is something we're generally pretty good at. But it's about being effective and knowing when to use it. Then we're going to look at discipline, okay? Discipline is necessary if you're going to have effective swimming lessons. You have to be able to control poor behaviours, bad behaviours. And then finally, we'll wrap up by looking at some of the key keys to behaviour management. What do you need to take away with you for every single lesson? All right, so before we get into the assessment, have a look at this picture. So we've got a teacher here. She's got five kids in her class. Is she engaging those kids? I can see that this little boy over here with the green goggles is not doing the activity, but he is watching what the other kids are doing. So when the teacher sort of clicks him into gear and says, right, start kicking, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he'll get moving on that. This little boy in the middle is staring directly at the teacher. He is 100% engaged and will do whatever he's told by, by what I can see from this picture. This little girl beside him is staring off at the fairies. She's not really sure what she's looking at. You know, there's probably something more interesting over the other side of the pool. But when I look at her feet, I can see that she's doing the activity. You know, she's doing the kicking. So she must have been engaged at the beginning of the activity. She knows what she's doing. And this girl here right in the end, she's really engaged. She's got her toes pointed. She's looking at her toes. You know, I think she's probably trying to really impress the teacher here. So I'd say that here we can, we can tell that the teacher's got a pretty good level of engagement and that's what I'd call a four, of, four or five level on the scale of one to five. She's also got really good control of her physical environment, she's got her ducks lined up, she's got her basket and all her balls here, her foam mat sitting up so it does not fall into the pool <laughs> as has happened to many of us many times before I'm sure. Okay so here's a couple of things just to look out for. This is how you can assess whether you've got good engagement or not. Alright, so let's go to that scale of 1 to 5. On the number 1 is where you have absolutely no control. Okay, this is the worst case scenario. 
This is where you probably fear going to swimming lessons because the kids are going to misbehave and you're not going to know what to do and the parents are unhappy and it could possibly be a safety issue if a kid's jumping off the ledge and possibly hitting their head on the side of the pool as they're jumping in. All right, three is around your moderate control. Okay, so this is where you know, you're looking at having a bit of control. The kids generally do what you say but they're not always engaged and quite often they'll do their own thing. Um, and they're not developing as quickly as, you like, as you'd like. And then number five, that's where we're heading. Okay, That's where we want to be. Really good control, excellent control of the classroom. The kids are really engaged. When you talk, they're listening. Okay, But you're not talking all the time, so you allow the children to, to play and enjoy the lesson as well. And what I want, a point I want to make here is it's not necessarily about being quiet. Okay, excellent control does, that, does not mean that you can hear a pin drop. All right, so excellent control really means that you've got fantastic control of the emotional, social development of that lesson. And kids really pay attention when you're talking. What I'll do is I'll just bring up here the other document that I've supplied to you. So we've also got a PDF which sum, this document summarizes what we're going through today in the video. And in that, it takes you through a few more in a few more in detailed examples of how you assess yourself. So have a look at that and make an assessment of where you are on the scale on a one to five. When I started I was only 17 years old and I'd say I was probably around a two. Okay, so it took me a number of years to get up to the number five. That's okay, you know, experience really helps. And I found that to get really to get to that five level I needed to spend time with other teachers and learn from them as well. Alright, so how do we create an engaging lesson? Is it about entertaining the kids? Well, you know, I would argue no, you don't have to be a clown. I have taught with a lady who was a fantastic clown. And she kept the children entertained, she was silly, she jumped around, um, they did high fives and she flipped around, she basically juggled in the lessons. That's just not me. You know, if I tried to do that, then the kids would have seen right through me. It's just not me. So you don't have to be entertaining, but you do have to be engaging. And that comes down to a good lesson plan. Right, so good lesson plans have appropriate tasks which will challenge the children at that level. It will always advance on their prior learning. But it shouldn't be all high learning activities or they will, they'll just simply lose focus. Okay, so we want to pulse is what I call it. We want to pulse between the high learning and the low learning activities. So if you just look at this really terrible drawing <laughs> that I've done here, please don't judge. What we want is we want to have around, in a 30 minute lesson, usually around two high cur learning value curves where the children really need to be engaged, they, you really need 100% of their attention for this and they should be focusing and concentrating and trying really hard. And then you want to have around three low value learning activities. This is where it's easy. So they should be able to do these things without thinking. A warm up to start with, you work your way up to that high value learning activity. You work your way down, you do some games, something to reinforce the activity, but something that's easy. Then you work your way up to your second high value learning activity. And of course you work your way down to a warm down activity. So that's what I mean when I say pulsing. I think that's really important so that you don't have all too high learning activities or too low learning activities. And the only way that you can do that is through a good lesson plan. I return to that point of having a lesson plan. Okay, They don't need to be chapters or essays, but it is important to have a structure of what you're doing and how you're going to pulse through those activities. What else do you need to do? Small activities between turns. Okay, So when you are taking children one-on-one, -on -one, which you must do in the lessons to focus on a particular learning skill, you must have other activities for the children to do back at the step. If you're always getting disciplining children because they're mucking up while you're up with another child, why do you think that is? You know, it's because they're bored. They're really bored. They're in a pool. There's all these colourful activities going on around them. They want to be in the fun. So make it fun for them. You know, give them a, a simple activity such as putting all the toys back into the basket or you know, squirting the water out of the water toy, something really simple and easy that they'll be able to enjoy and keep them busy. 
All right, now we need to reinforce children positively. We need to give praise. And this can be a really great tool if you use it wisely. You should not be giving praise every step of the way, right? That will reduce the, you know, the benefit of, of being able to... It, it won't be a tool for managing behaviour if you give good feedback all the time. So only praise good behaviour. And try to avoid general praise. So at the end of the class, say things like, great class, guys, even though you've just had a 30-minute horrible class where no one does what they're told and you've ended the class with great class. Well, that's just going to confuse them and it won't help you in managing the behaviour. Try and be as genuine as you possibly can. All right, so I, when I give positive feedback, I genuinely am really happy, really excited that that child has achieved something because it shows that I've been an effective teacher. You know, I had one girl who just refused for weeks to put her face in the water. I'm sure we've all had that many, many times before. You know, she would blow bubbles on the surface and she'd pick toys up whilst keeping her head out of the water. God knows how she did that. But she just wouldn't put her face in the water. And when we eventually got her to do that, boy, did I give her praise. I was really excited. And it, I was excited for me too because it meant that I had been successful. So that's what I mean when you talk about giving, being genuine. All right, so you, we, we want to focus on new skills, praising new skills or new good behaviours. If a child has particularly struggled to be, become part of the routine, part of the class environment, and then they start to show that they're getting involved in the games, they're throwing their hands up, having suggestions, doing as they're told, so to speak, that's where you can lavish some praise on them. This is the hard part, right? Discipline. This can be very difficult for some swimming teachers. Either we tend to over-discipline or under-discipline. And a lot of the young female swimming teachers really have trouble with this. So what I want to say to start out with is first it's necessary. In my point of view, discipline is an absolutely necessary part of managing behaviour. We want to start though with tactical ignoring. You do not want to discipline everything. As they say, choose your battles. This is really, really important. So I did teach swimming with a teacher who was in the military. I'm not joking. She was in the military and on weekends she taught swimming. And she was very military in every sense of the word. Okay, now she disciplined everything. She would expect the children to sit on the step while she was off with another child and do nothing. And she would always discipline if they splashed or they bobbed up and down on the water. You know, things that I wouldn't normally worry about. So I would say focus on what matters, yeah? Look out for safety risks or if you're really trying to get a child to do a task but they refuse, they just want to play, that's the time when you use discipline. Don't use it all of the time. Then what you want to do is redirect the child first. So give them a chance to do the right thing before you really get in there and start, you know, they become in trouble, as we like to say. So what I might do, let's talk about Georgina, right? Georgina has jumped off the step, she's jumped too far, I've had to come back from my one-on-one -on -one with another child, yank her out of the water, put her back on the step, you know, which is disrupting the class. So I will say, Georgina, do not jump out from the step because you need to be close enough to swim back to the step. You know, also a little side safety lesson. Alright, so I don't want you to do that anymore. What I do need you to do is I need you to put those toys back in the basket for me. Could you do that please? Thank you. And I move on. I don't wait for her to respond. I don't wait for her to argue. I just assume that she will do it. Talk confidently. And if you are not confident, pretend. All right. You really need to show that you're the boss. All right. So let's just say that Georgina has listened to me say, don't jump off the step so far. Put the toys back in the basket. And she just doesn't want to listen, you know. She just does it again, so I have to come back and I have to give a really clear warning. Georgina, this is a warning. You're not to jump off the step and I'll give her another task to do. But Georgina's not having it. So this is where I give her a second and final warning. And I will say, very, I will be very close to her, be very clear in my words, my face close to her face so that she can hear me very clearly. Georgina, this is your second and your final warning. If you do this again, you will sit out on the edge of the pool for one minute. You won't be able to play, you won't be able to talk to the other children, 
This is your final warning. And of course, Georgina being the three-year-old girl that she is, she goes and does it again. And probably more than anything, just to test me. So this is where the key action comes into it and you must always follow through. So you must now use the discipline. So I will sit Georgina out on the side of the pool and I will explain what I'm doing. Georgina, you are on time out for one minute. I gave you a warning, I gave you a final warning and you continue to show that you didn't, that you didn't do the behaviour that was asked. So you need to sit outside for one minute now. All right. What I do want to point out here is make sure that your instructions are clear. It should never be a surprise to a child while they're sitting out on the edge. Okay? Make sure you follow through though. Your reputation will get around amongst the children if you do not. Alright, so what are our keys to behaviour management? First of all, practice makes perfect. Okay, you're not expected to be perfect the day that you walk in or even after a few years You've just got to keep practicing and keep reevaluating. Perseverance, that is the key word. You have to persevere. That's what's going to make the difference. You're not expected to be perfect, but you do need to keep trying again and again and again. Plan your lessons. Have good lesson planning. It will help you in the long run. Be yourself. Don't try to be disgenuine. Be absolutely confident, even if it means that you have to pretend to be from time to time. Stay calm. You know, as I said, we do get frustrated from time to time, but controlling your own emotions is really important. If you can't control yourself, how on earth can you control the, the behaviour of the other children? And as I said in the discipline, we always follow through. Never make a threat or a warning that you will not be serious about following up on. So this is our continuous cycle in summing up. You know, we continually assess ourselves. We always prepare for lessons. We continuously use positive feedback uh, whenever a child does a, a new activity or shows a new good behaviour and we use effective discipline. It's always about continuing, continuing that cycle and assessing yourself and going again and again until you really arrive at that five level where you have excellent control of the lesson. So I want to finish up on this gorgeous little photo of these boys, persevere. It's worth it. Why? Because we want to teach these swim, children how to swim. We want them to effectively learn so that they can save their lives at the end of the day. It is absolutely worth it. All right, now one thing you might be asking yourself is why didn't I do any focus on disabilities? We're actually going to do a video just on children with autism to come up and we'll look further throughout the year in talking about children with disabilities and how to engage them. So look out for that. I'd really love you to come along and give us your feedback on that one as well. Thank you so much for your time. Happy swimming. Take care.